Hello friends, welcome to the continuation lecture for uh, dislocation of shoulder joint. In our last class, we have learned about the types of shoulder joint and also the lesions which are associated with the shoulder joint. In this lecture, we will learn about the different uh, complaints for with which the patient comes to you. So, how how does the patient comes to comes to the OPD? The patient comes to the OPD with uh, um, the shoulder in abducted position and he will support his elbow with the opposite hand. The shoulder, if this is the baby, just think that it is uh, it has uh, dislocation of shoulder, it will abduct like this and with this hand it will hold it like this, like how I am holding it will hold it, okay? So that is the attitude of the patient with which the patient comes to you. He will abduct and then he will hold the uh, opposite elbow the elbow the, the affected elbow with the opposite hand okay and if you go to the history the patient will have the history of fall on an outstretched hand and there'll be pain and disability or inability to move the shoulder if you see if you examine him then normally the shoulder will be rounded right our shoulders will be rounded so this rounded counter will be lost and the shoulder will be flattened like this so here the shoulder is rounded here because of dislocation the shoulder will be flattened okay so flattened shoulder then uh, if you carefully inspect it you will see one more thing uh, if you carefully in inspect the person one you'll see the flattened shoulder and the other thing here in the supraclavicular region if you see uh, that too just below the clavicle here not supraclavicular infraclavicular just below the clavicle you see uh, fullness. Why is there a fullness? Because here the head which is there, there is dislocation. Obviously, it, if it's anterior dislocation, there will be fullness below the clavicle, right? So, if this is the clavicle, there will be fullness below the clavicle, okay? So, that is one thing which we see on exam, on just uh, exam, on uh, inspection. So, if you wanted to rule out how uh, how will you rule out this uh, f I mean, dislocation of shoulder? How, how will you confirm it? The best confirmation is one, he will hold his hand like this in abducted position uh, and he will hold the, the elbow with the opposite hand like this. Okay. So now, if you ask him to touch the opposite elbow, opposite shoulder, okay, with this hand, he, he will not be able to touch it. See, he is not able to touch it. So that is Dugas test. So there are two major tests. Number one, Dugas test. What is it? It is inability to touch the opposite shoulder. See, here he had fracture, he had dislocation. He's not able to touch the opposite shoulder, however much ever he tries. So how much ever he tries, he's not able to touch the opposite shoulder. So that is Dugas test. Number two, Hamilton rulers test. Hamilton ruler test. So, what is this Hamilton ruler test? Here in Hamilton ruler test, we place a ruler, a small ruler will be placed from the, we place a ruler from the lateral, on the lateral side of the arm, which touches the acromion process and the lateral condyle of the humerus. Like this, we place a uh, uh, um, ruler. Like how I have placed a placed the pen, we will place a ruler which is touching the acromion process and also the acromion process of shoulder and also the lateral condyle of humerus. Generally, if you see the ruler uh, cannot be placed, it will uh, fall down. But because there is flattening of shoulder here, the ruler which is placed over here, this will uh, remain in its position. You can you will be able to place a ruler over it. So that is Hamilton's ruler test. So how are you going to diagnose it? Uh, the best diagnosis is through an x-ray. So, this is the x-ray which I have got. This is the normal x-ray. So, here there is, see, if you see here, there is increased joint space. So, this is dislocation. So, this is uh, clavicle. This is the, sorry, this is the um, acromion process. Sorry, this is the glenoid labrum which is here. Here, acromion process. Here, clavicle, humerus. So, here there is increased joint space which shows dislocation of the shoulder joint okay this is the x-ray of shoulder which is done next what about posterior dislocation 
posterior dislocation it's difficult to diagnose because you know uh, the bone which is there that goes posteriorly so obviously it will be difficult to diagnose on an x-ray it is mostly missed in the x-ray so how are you going to treat this dislocation that is about posterior dislocation just uh, for posterior dislocation x-ray is not diagnostic ct scan is the diagnostic Okay, CT scan is the diagnostic. So, how are you going to treat the dislocations? Both posterior or anterior on any type of dislocation, how are you going to treat it? Number one, you will have to reduce the joint. See, there is a dislocation, obviously. the There is some dislocation, some uh, maybe anterior, maybe posterior. You will have to bring it if the, if, if the shoulder, if the head of the humerus is anteriorly dislo dislocated, then you will have to bring it. Uh, in its joint capsule similarly if it's posterior dislocation you'll have to bring it to its original place so that is called as reduction so first you will have to do a reduction once you have done a reduction you'll have to immobilize the shoulder because you'll have to keep it in place for some uh, days so that there won't be um, recurrence and after immobilized once the shoulder uh, is stable then you will do shoulder exercises so these are the major steps which you do we'll learn about each of them okay so how are you going to immobilize it immobilization is with sling with this chest arm bandage so immobilization is through chest arm bandage how will reduct it i'll just show you in a minute so major immobilization is through chest arm bandage so reduction for reduction of the shoulder joint there are mainly two different types of maneuvers so this is from an internet directly from the internet okay uh, yeah so what are these maneuvers i think you are able to view it right yeah so here this is called as coacher's maneuver the first maneuver which is important for reduction is number one which is coacher's maneuver so what do we do in coacher's maneuver? In coacher's maneuver, first we will apply attraction of the elbow joint. So if you see, um, no, you can't do it with this. Okay, just uh, take an example of this here. Uh, your first, ex your your first, you have uh, the there will be a surgeon. The surgeon will hold the hand. And he will apply a traction like this in this direction down first and then he will rotate it externally okay the arm is externally rotated like this this is here if this is the arm if this is the elbow this is internal rotation here this is external rotation so here the arm is externally rotated okay the patient the surgeon will apply a traction and he will externally rotate the arm and then he will adducted like this the arm which is externally rotated this is adducted now in this way once this is adducted we will have to do it internal rotation we'll have to make this hand touch the opposite shoulder see this hand which is there the affected hand should touch the opposite shoulder internal rotation this will cause reduction of the joint okay the dislocated joint will dislocated head will go in its place okay first we are doing traction and external rotation and then we do adduction and then internal rotation because if this is the baby and this is dislocated uh, i'll just first this is the normal normally the patient will come like this right with holding like this uh, with holding his elbow in the opposite hand so now we will first apply a traction downwards and then we will externally rotate it like this after rotating it externally we will adduct it Okay, we have adducted it. So this is externally rotated and then we have adducted it. And then we are internally rot rotating it in such a way that this hand will touch the opposite shoulder like this. Okay, so this is what is happening. Okay, first there is traction downwards and then there is external rotation. And then there is adduction. And then there is internal rotation. So all these movements will make the head to go into the into its position into its joint cap joint capsule so this is called as coacher's maneuver okay now there is second maneuver also for reduction so that is called as hippocrates maneuver 
this is not mainly followed now but there is one more manner which i would like to just tell you in detail so here first the surgeon will pull his arm in this direction pull the hand of the patient in this direction and then the surgeon will apply a force by putting his uh, leg in the axilla of the patient and he will apply a counter traction in this way so because of this traction and counter traction the head of the humerus will come back to its position so this is called as hippocrates maneuver okay so these are the different maneuvers which are available for uh, dislocation of the shoulder joint so there are complications of this uh, shoulder joint dislocation the major complications include one there can be axillary nerve injury because if you see the axillary nerve will passes through the um, um in above the shoulder joint so obviously sorry below the shoulder sorry around the shoulder joint uh, so there may be injury to this axillary nerve whenever there is injury to this axillary nerve the axillary nerve mainly supplies the deltoid first so there is paralysis of deltoid first so to rule out it how are you going to rule out it it's simple just the work of the deltoid is shoulder abduction so ask the person to abduct the shoulder he may not be able to abduct the shoulder so then you can say that there is injury to the axillary nerve that is one important thing which is important one important test you will have to do before treating the shoulder joint because if you see here the patient will not have any trouble in abducting the shoulder generally the patient will come to us in the abducted position because that is the position which is more favorable for him and less pain and he has less pain in that position so whenever the person is not able to abduct the shoulder then just think that there may be axillary nerve injury don't forget that and then one of the other late complication is recurrent dislocation recurrent dislocation is more common so these are the different treatment options which are available and the complications of the shoulder joint in our next class we will learn about the surgical treatments which are available thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you very much for watching my lecture thank you